head around. You see the villains in the Star Wars movies, which are the corporations. Yeah. It's all the corporations. The Trade Federation, the yeah. banking clan, they, it's a clan. They want, they want less taxes. That's what they say in the movie. So that's the only thing that you get if you watch the films. But there's sort of that backdrop of, well, wait, thousands of worlds left the uh, Republic, and they never in the movie really ask, well, why is that? Are they bad people? They, they, maybe they wanted to leave the Republic for good reasons. They didn't all leave because corporations told them to. They didn't believe that they were getting representation under that model, and they weren't. Um, and the Clone Wars series does a remarkable job of, of saying that there are good people in the Separatist movement who had good intentions about the whole thing, but they didn't know that Sidious right. was behind it. And that's kind of what poisons the well for conversation on it, because it was it was the puppet master routine by a bad guy. Yeah, once you get the Darth Sidious in there, it's hard to come back from it. No, that's for Plus, like, I, like I've been thinking about it. If I were living in the old Republic, yeah. uh, a few glaring problems there. For one, when, when we go to Tatooine in episodes uh, one through three, uh, slavery is a thing. Mm -hmm. Like out and out slavery, where yeah. you you literally buy people like chattel, and uh, you know Qui Gon Jinn and Obi Wan are uh, meeting Anakin and Anakin's mother, and they end up like gambling to get Anakin, and they're like, well, we can only take one slave. I guess we'll leave the other slave here because we're yeah. perfectly we we find slavery distasteful, but it's not the mission of the Jedi to end slavery in the galaxy. Qui Gon or respects apparently the Republic the, respects the order of the planet. I mean, he does not fight to get Shmi off there. Like on a moral level, he feels more compelled to say, this is the way this planet works, and we're not going to disrupt it, but we're going to get yeah. Anakin out of here. And there's been a lot of hand-wringing in kind of past years, particularly with like social justice-oriented fans of Star Wars, that like, it's a really troubling message. Yeah. You know, you go in, you kind of get what you want, and then you leave. They never fought to end slavery on Tatooine, and you'd kind of expect that from Star Wars, where would... everything is black and white. Or, or if I were, if I were Qui Gon Jinn, ass assuming I was like, you know what, we're just, we're really focused right now on trying to increase midichlorians. Yeah. We're not focused on slavery. I think I would still get back to Coruscant and be like, do you guys want to like pool our resources together and buy Anakin's mom? Uh, we could like take a, I'm going to take a vacation, fly back to Tatooine. It's going to be like the equivalent Coruscant, probably a better kick at economy than Tatooine. So yes. I could probably just like put a hat around the uh, the office. We're all going to put in our uh, our lightsaber money. I don't know what Jedi yeah. spend their money on for fun. Um, well, you know, the Republic neglects. <laughs> all of the, uh, the worlds on the Outer Rim, which is where Tatooine is based. And kind of another subtext of Star Wars that you hear a lot about in the movies, but they, they don't take the time to explain is, same with the Separatist movement, um, the core worlds are the, are the loyalists to the Republic. That's where all the wealth is. That's where all the trade is. This is the Beltway. Yes, it is the Beltway. And, and the analogy is so perfect. Flyover country, the East Coast and the West Coast kind of thing. Um, the, Outer Rim worlds are the worlds that defect to the Separatist movement because they don't, they don't feel like they're getting the, the deal. Their worlds are still uh, run over by slavery, crime, yeah. um, crime syndicates are tearing them up, and they also are impoverished. They're not part of the wealthy core worlds, and you see the same sort of dynamic that we talk about in our own world all the time. It makes a lot of sense, but it's kind of unfortunate that in the movies they're such simplistic bad guys, well, the separatists. It's funny, too, because the, the themes that you've been striking on, which are a distant, distant remote, corrupt, and ineffective government, yeah. is not typically something heralded by progressives. Mm -hmm. uh, and the idea of, of planetary uh, sovereignty that you alluded to earlier, also, you know, that sounds kind of like states' rights, right? Yep. But George Lucas uh, is a... Uh, fairly vociferous critic of neoliberalism. Quite. Uh, and uh, would, first, first of all, can you define neoliberalism or, or approximate a definition for us? Yeah, neoliberalism is um, really the economic liberalism argument. So after and World the, the War, old sense of the word liberal, right? Yeah, I mean, li after, liberating markets. After World War II, liberating markets and free trade between nations. Um, it is the underpinning values of capitalism. Um, and, I mean, George Lucas, for someone who is as successful as he was, was highly resentful um, of these very things and of neoliberalism's impact on the world, the consumerism, um, sort of the, the uh, massive amounts of wealth that were accumulating in the West, and then how he viewed rich people, particularly in the 80s and 90s, as using their money. Mm, yeah, and, he, well, and he's got uh, a lot of kind of weird, tiny jabs throughout the films where conceptually, I think um, one of the neat things about Star Wars is if you want to get political about it, kind of there, there's a way for everybody to approach it where, yeah. where they're like, ah, oh, yeah, the fight I've been fighting is, is, is really heralded here. Um, but when you get into the minutiae, like the uh, General Grievous, uh, Grievous's ship is... 
Oh, it's the invisible hand. The invisible hand. Yeah. So I didn't He's know He's going this. against Adam Smith. I didn't know this until like a month ago. I knew that General Grievous' ship was called the invisible hand, but I didn't think about it. I didn't think about it. Obviously, that's a broadside against Adam Smith. 